Can you believe that I need a bottle with timings on to make sure I hydrate enough? Yeah, but you'll lose the bottle. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast. I haven't done one of these so for far. a month. Yeah, it's been really, really busy though. I just just on my new show and then went to the Himalayas. It's been it's been a pretty intense twenty days, thirty yeah, days, thirty days. Really days of real intensity. And I've barely so. seen you. And, and part of me was beginning to wonder whether are we getting on a bit better because we haven't seen each other at all. And that led me to think maybe that would make a really good podcast. Mm. Does absence make the heart grow fonder? You know, do we miss each other as much as we used to? What is missing someone? I thought it'd be really intriguing and interesting to talk about what is it about missing someone? And that phrase, it's, it's often used and it's often trotted out and it's often thrown around. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I have, over the years, had a really troubled relationship because of, we've talked about on here before, you know, codependency issues, um, anxiety issues, uh, a sense of Jealousy. seeking... Yeah, jealousies. And, and, but, 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 going back to Abandonment. Some of the, but going back to some of our discussions about jealousy, the jealousy that can be informed not by... I can't believe we've got that on. Why well, can't you believe we've got that on? It's just a wash. It's it what off. happens in houses. So there we go. We don't wash edit. It so we're now... We're now that washing machine is constantly... It's like a third person in our marriage. It's constantly trying to muscle its way into our podcast all the time. So I'm just going to paddle water now. Well, I'm, missing her, I'm missing her already, you see. She's the left towels, the shop. The towels were actually walking around the house. They Maddie said they'd been washed. Oh. Anyway, let's not talk about towels. Um... Yeah, and so over the yeah, jealousy obviously, but jealousy in terms of that thing of fear of abandonment and how someone's, you know, for very understandable reasons for, you know, when they're in a relationship and they're a bit clingy or they're a bit sort of insecure or they need that security and what have you. And I think a lot of people get that. I mean, I remember when I was young, the only conventional relationship I ever witnessed as a child was my nan and granddad's. Um, and every summer it was tradition that my grandfather would leave for the summer. He would just go driving off to the pot God, to the potteries. Being a man, isn't it? Well, well, yeah. But I, I and I remember as a child, you know, having had a mum who was often always running away, and in a weird way to this day she's always kind of running away. Um, I wanted to be somewhere where people were there, and and that there was the knowledge that they were there and that they were going to be there, you know, all the time. And my nan provided me with that. And so she was the only one she'd take time off work. And my dad was, my, my granddad, I call him dad. My granddad would always head off and I'd always think, and it was always weird because after about two or three weeks, nan's mood would have changed in the summer I was with her. So that this, even this, this secure era of the summer became really fraught because she'd get more and more tetchy and edgy because she was obviously missing him. Well, also, she said that he sometimes used to leave her with no money. Well, he'd leave her with no money. That's and, extraordinary, And, really. of course, we were in a time... I mean, they were the generation that wouldn't have dealt with phones anyway. It'd be the occasional phone call would come in. But she wouldn't hear from him for days. And I remember seeing it have a really adverse effect on her. And I, so I remember... I surprised. Yeah, and I remember like learning... cheek. Yeah, but it wasn't just on a practical... Used to, she said he just used to go. Yeah, he would. He would just go. But, so, I mean, women very rarely have that choice, do they, just to get up and go? No, no, no. And well, even more so my mom back did. in the day. Yeah. <laughs> my mum did. So, going back to our relationship... Yeah, but so, your mum wasn't in a partnership, so that was very different. Quite in interestingly, if she'd been with your dad, she probably wouldn't have done that. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, so, at a young age, my relationship with people's absence. absence in relationships and seeing it have a negative impact on people it affected me. So I've had a troubled relationship with it and you've been away for, you know, obviously, you know, the last seven days and it wasn't actually, and the weird thing about it was the way I felt about it in 2019 was far, far different, far different to how I would have felt about it 15, 13, 12, 6, 8 years ago. We got there eventually. Well, no, 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 no. But I think it's intriguing and interesting to think about it, isn't yeah. it? Because because I think it's been a major problem for us. And also that whole thing of does absence make the heart grow fonder? I mean, what do you think of that phrase? What's your relationship with... I think it's like any other phrases. It just, it just, it just depends where you're at, mm. at that time. I mean, there can be some points where we might not have been getting on very well. Uh, actually, when I'm thinking about the trek that I did to Kenya. Do you remember we were getting on really badly before mm. then? Really badly. And I went to Kenya and I think that sorted it out. I really missed you. I really missed the girls. A lot of the stuff that was annoying me about you, I just decided to just let go of. 
I think also when you put into extreme situations and you see how other people live, it just gives you huge gratitude. So it depends. When I've done big challenges, mm. it's always been a really positive thing. Mm. Um, there's been some occasions when we might not have been getting on very well and then you're not around and it's actually really, really nice. Mm. And I want it to go on for a bit longer because I just want that freedom of thinking about another person and that's not about you I think that's the same for anyone mm. you know sometimes when you hear people talking who live alone and they come in and they do whatever they want and they eat whatever they want and they behave however they want god I mean I would hate that full time mm. but there is something I think anybody in a couple thinks god it would be really nice to just sometimes just be totally on my own mm. um, so it's not actually that that absence would make my heart grow f- Fonder, it would stay fond, I suppose, in that situation. Yeah. I mean, recently when you went to New York and I had, um, I really enjoyed that week and I wanted three or four more days mm. because I just got myself rebalanced. You know, I'd got out of doing my meditation, I'd got out of doing my yoga and I went every day and I wasn't thinking about fitting in with anybody else. Got up whatever time I wanted, went to bed whatever time I wanted and I really, really enjoyed it. Mm. And that was like a holiday from the relationship. Mm. which I think can can make your absence, makes the heart grow fonder in a different way. There's loads of different permutations of it, I think. Well, that's interesting you should say that, yeah. it, I think. Because when I think back to that New York trip, when I got back, I, I resolutely felt like you didn't want me back. Yeah. And that, think, that then, I think, how, how on earth can the person, for the person coming back, how on earth can that feel like a positive I thing? I don't think it's true to say I didn't want you to come back. I think that I was just trying to sort myself out because mm. I've got kind of... Really, I'd, I'd got out of kilter with myself. You remember years ago when I went to that, how many years ago now? Is it three years ago when I went to that um, retreat? Mm. And how brilliant I felt for months and months afterwards. And then I'd really lost all sense of it before you went to New York. Mm. Not Nothing to do with you. I just, we give up on doing the things that are good for us, don't we? We, we, we all do it. We know what makes drift. us feel better. We drift. We drift. drift. We drift. There's always drift. I mean, it's like this morning. I was down here for hours with jet lag. Did I do a meditation? Did I do a stretch? I had the house I know. I'm surprised that you haven't turned to any of those tools. I just feel too worn out. It's really weird. Yeah, but it's annoying. But but so so it wasn't that I didn't want you to come back when you came back from New York. It's just I was in the middle of a really healing thing that I then had to stop because I found right. it really... And I think that's one of the challenges of being in a couple. It's like, mm. how do we do the things that we need to do for ourselves, you just as much as I? This mm. isn't a one-way street. Um, it's interesting that you flipped it around because I hadn't even thought about it like that. I was thinking of it very literally and in a very male way, you know, the idea of, oh, well, when either one of us goes away. I mean, like at the beginning of our relationship, for example, I mean, our honeymoon was cut short and uh, the, the, as soon as Maddie was born, I was off abroad for months on end. And, um, you know, I never really asked you how you felt about that. There was no sort of, it wasn't even really up for debate. You were with a new baby and, and you were skipping off. And even, even when I've been shooting series like the Kitchen series we were doing, I was kind of away for like six months of the year, even though we were shooting it together, or you'd come in for a day here or there. Yeah. You know, and I never really allowed myself, not in a sort of negative way, I mean, I, but I never thought to myself, I wonder if she misses me, I, you know, in that, in that sort of circumstance. I think since you've sorted out your jealousy, I do miss you. Before right. you sorted out your jealousy, you didn't. I didn't miss you. Because it was, it was a breath like of fresh a break. Air. Yeah. It was just a break. It's like when you went into the Priory, though that mm. was such a sad time. And guys, please don't have a go at me for bringing this up. This is the way that we. I said that, I said this in my chat it's about so being sober. I said, look, you can either you can either join us on our journey, which embraces this all the time, because yeah. otherwise, without sobriety, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, and, and <laughs> there are there are things that Mark and I have gone through that inform every conversation yeah. that we have. And the thing is, I'm a total fuck up. I'm a nightmare. I'm an absolute nightmare. And Mark and I often talk about the fact that if Mark hadn't gone into the priory, I probably would have ended up needing to go to the prior myself. I, can't, I, can't I was know really you'd have been a using, I was really using alcohol to deal with my traumas and yeah, yeah, you upsets and I was using it to self medicate for sure. So that put to one side I and also I had a much better childhood than Mark. Mark had a really hard childhood. And if you are in a relationship with somebody for life you are always, as a couple, working on those things mm, that mm. happened to you as a child that informs 
how your relationship works and mm. your abandonment issues with your mum like you've often talked about haven't you you'd be on a train you'd be terrified the whole time on the train mm. yeah. but your mum was going to get off the train well, she would, would just disappear she would disappear on the train for and, ages and i was that was what a lot of the early days of our relationship felt like it mm. felt like the same strident panic. You had a sense of panic. So mm. when you said you missed me, mm. it wasn't romantic to me. Right. It just felt like you needed me, not like you missed me for me. It was more like you missed me because it gave you anxiety about would I meet somebody else or would I go off with somebody else? Or would I... So all of that stuff got in the way of those true feelings of absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah. But I, I mean, it's been really nice this time that I went away that there weren't any dramatics about it and you've just been really nice about it and supportive and and that gives me the wood for the trees I can see the wood for the trees and then I see you and then I miss you and then I came back and you were really lovely and you've been really mm. so it's been this trip has been really really good for that um um yeah and whenever I go away like you know sometimes when I go for a couple of days to CK up in Scotland, I always really miss you. And it always makes me want to come back and see you. So I think a, good, a bit of absence is really good for a couple. Mm. I think when you're talking about months and months, like, you know, some people like when they've got people in the military or something, yeah. that must be incredibly hard because you must just get used to the person not being there. Well, so I'll, it is a fine balance. I was talking also in the vlogs about, certainly when I was coming up to meeting you, about a shyness that kicks in. And I think one of the real flashpoints that we've had when we've been absent from each other is the getting locked back into each other's being with each other again so like that moment very much i remember when i was in new york i remember we had i think we, we fell out a lot when i got back because certain expectations and fears creep in and i was sort of sharing at heathrow airport with whilst i was waiting for you how i suddenly felt very shy about seeing you because there's that sort of you know even in a the longest of relationships and what we've been together now so 17 years whatever it is um you know if there's still that moment, my mother commented on it to me. She said, God, it's so nice. You really obviously care and love her because you get that same. I said, yeah, I am nervous. I said, I'm nervous, nervous. But but what is that nervousness? What are the components of that nervousness? Well, a huge part of it is obviously I'm excited to see you. Another part of it is you want to think the person's missed you, but you don't want to ask because you want I to. I just assume you would miss yeah, me. Yeah, no, no. Well, because historically there have been so many occasions where you haven't. And I'm, I'm not an idiot. I might have been the, the, the pain in the arse, but I was always sensing and I'm, 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 I'm intelligent yeah, but, enough to have known but that you. you but but you, that's the classic projection. Whereas in the early days when we were together and I really had missed you, and you'd come in mm. and you'd be all like, projecting that I hadn't missed you. Mm. And then it would make me recoil from you and think, oh God, mm. oh, I thought but I, I missed him, but actually I didn't, because now he's back and he's got all these issues. And it's just like, well, no, I want you to go out the door again. And then that became the reality. Mm. But I knew, I always knew that wasn't from a bad place in you. That was from insecurity. Yeah. That was just from insecurity. And, and I do feel sad about that because I think we did... But then, is that not what a relationship's about? No relationship starts right, does it? No. Very few. No. So all that stuff we've had to work out, but... Now, what, yeah. I suppose a sort of straight question, what are the things that you missed about each other? Because it was funny, this trip, it was a weird one for me and the girls, because it felt... I mean, obviously, we wanted you back, we were looking forward to seeing you and everything like that, but it felt ludicrously quick. I mean, ludicrously quick. And also, mm -hmm. because I think we were, as a family really rooting for you and obviously Nadia's been on the Himalayan trek for anyone who's not followed that side of that story um raising money for charity etc and doing a remarkable physical challenge I think because also and having shot stuff and worked on stuff like that and knowing what that entails I think we were there with you in spirit knowing that you were schlepping yeah. and da 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 um but it still went remarkably quickly from our side so there wasn't really even any time to mi to really miss you that's good and then I want ah, oh, but then that's where I then go onto the worry. Does and I sort of start to think, is that a shift? Is that a change? Does that mean no. I don't care so much? Does that no, mean I don't do love care. so much? But you see, like you could say to me, oh, we were having such a. This would be the difference between you and me. Mm. You could say, oh, we've been having such a good time, and we were so set up for it, and we were so organised. We didn't actually even miss you. Mm. I wouldn't be hurt by that at all because 
I know that you love me. I know that doesn't come from a place of not loving me or not wanting to be with me. It comes from a place of you were getting on with life. Yeah. And it was fine. And it was totally normal. Mm. It's totally... People all the time spend time apart from each other. Yeah, I mean, I suppose those moments of what I missed most were... You're not feeling insecure. And no. that is a familiar place for you. Yeah. That's the thing. And so that will almost give you anxiety because what's that feeling that's yeah. not here? And that panic isn't there. Yeah. And you've sometimes... I think misconstrued a, a feeling of panic anxiety as love, yes. as passion, as something meaningful, yeah. and that's gone because you are in a really, you you actually do feel secure. You you knew I wasn't going to go off to the Himalayas and yeah. fall madly in love with the Himalayan and not come back. Well, I didn't. I don't know that for sure. Is that your camera isn't sinking? Is it? Do you look lower in your shot? I don't think so. No. Oh, okay, good. Um, we've got one of those selfie sticks that slowly decides well, honestly, to do that. Honestly, we've got no equipment. We haven't got a microphone. No, we're, we're getting microphones. We're getting microphones. Because, well, we're not allowed to talk about why we're getting microphones. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and funnily enough, so moving on to what we missed and in what conditions we missed each other. I, I mean, where I missed you most were at those points, ironically, where, where at the moment she's so jet-lagged. She's not there anyway. But with the evenings, because I always felt that the girls were so sweet whilst you were gone. They would always say, are you sure you're all right with us sort of seeing a friend or being... And I'm like, absolutely fine, you know. I'm so, and then I, I... And I was, in terms of them, I was absolutely fine. But I, it, was the, it was the evenings. It was the evenings in the house that were bizarre. And I, I was haunted. You must have loved it. No, Come on. Really. Find I, what you no, want on the telly. I, it was like Read. I couldn't crack... I wanted to do so many things, I negated everything. I was like, I need to, I need to... Classic you. I need to Classic read, you. I need to write, I need to edit, I need to... Classic, too much. I want to go out, I don't want to go out, I want to be here for the girls, I don't want to be out for the... And, and it was just... And so I missed that sense of you being around. And so I was kind of curious, what did you miss? What did you, did you miss me? Should we wait for Maddie to come in? No. It's the dog in the cage. Oh, sorry guys, I thought that was our daughter hanging around behind us wanting to come in. Um... What did I miss about you? Okay. Um, well, I missed everything, really. I mean, it was interesting because one of the captains, because uh, I've just been on this trek for Copperfield Breast Cancer Charity, and there was four captains, four teams, and one of the captains was a husband and wife. See, like, this is and the thing I, about that trek. I, if I'd have known, I, I kind of valiantly stepped back thinking this was an, an all women. I didn't think couples were going. I just didn't. I would well, have made things, I would have couple. juggled things around to They're kind of They're a celebrity go. couple and they're I very young. You through. And they're very young. And I thought, wow, what is going on with the dog? I can't concentrate. The dog is doing something really annoying. What is it? Sounds like there's somebody breaking in. In fact, earlier this morning when I was here, I really did think there was someone breaking in. I was so scared and I was scared to come and wake you up. Okay. So Sorry, early. guys. Sorry, guys. Uh, where was I? There was a, yeah, yeah. So, so when I was watching them and I was thinking, God, how amazing for them. They get to go back to their room or their tent together. They get to talk through all the frustrations and the worries and the fears. They get to support each other. They get to help each other up the mountain. I missed you so much because I knew everything that I was struggling with mm. would have been half the struggle if you'd been there. Oh, oh sweetie, give me a hand. Isn't that funny when you say... But then again, what I think is really important and is really important for couples is to sometimes struggle without the other one there because... It's going to happen one day. Yeah. One day one of us is going to be dead. Is that what you mean? Is that what you were leading to? No, no. But it's just good. It's just good to go away and just try and do things on your own, isn't it? I mean, we do a lot of stuff together. It's good, it's good to struggle on your own. So I missed, I missed our conversation. I missed our hugs. Mm. I missed the assurity that if something, if I didn't feel something was right, or if I was worrying about what I was doing or the way I was being or what I was saying, that you would tell me the honest truth. Mm. Um, yeah, so I just missed everything. I just missed our partnership, our friendship, our lovership. I just missed it all. Oh, don't, that makes me really emotional because I was about to say that one of the things... One of the things I'd always like to be able to do is, is, is cradle and look after you more than... I know we've talked about, I'm not talking about affection, but, you know, you have 
And I was reminded of this, knowing that you were going through a difficult time and seeing just the, I mean, believe me guys, I saw no, I had no privileged position of clippage other than what I put in the vlog of you being upset. And I was genuinely, genuinely worried. I was really not scared. Scared's too sort of like flibbity gibbet kind of headless chicken. I never get headless chickeny about that. You know, I will go into a sort of focus mode of fear. Um, and I was really worried, not because I didn't think you'd ultimately come back alive. I, d I didn't have that worry, well, God, though. I didn't though, think I'd ultimately though, as come I, back as alive. I hear about it, and you know, clearly things were sketchy on that front. But I was just worried about your mental state, and I was worried about your emotional state because. And there's a number of things I want to say here. Firstly, hearing you say all of that is really moving because, because of my low self-esteem, because of my thought that I always feel that because you're such a, you know, outward going personality, magnanimous, you're an empath, you connect with people, you connect with everyone. There's no one who could walk into a room and you won't find the connection. You might not necessarily be the person that you stay friends with for life, but you'll find the connection. I within that scope, always think that what you get from me is utterly replaceable with whoever you're with. You will find whatever it is you like from me, collectively, in everyone else like that. No, 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 I know. And that's, that's more about my shit than it is about yours. Um, and so I always think you'll sustain yourself. And that's why in the past, I would confuse that with thinking she might meet someone that she just, if, if you add to that a contingent of she fancies them or likes them, then boom, it's all over. But all it's over. interesting what you say there, yeah. that you would be able to sustain yourself, which I would, but that doesn't mean I don't love you and that doesn't mean I don't miss you. No, 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 no. But what, but, you, but that is, that is the, that's the, the flaw in mm. your thinking mm. is that you want, uns, you want, unsustainability to prove love or need or mm. desire and the thing is I'm a strong person mm. but I also love you and need you and want you but not need you to the point where I can't cope if you're there no, and I fall to pieces absolutely. because you wouldn't love me if I was that sort of a person no, anyway I know, I know, exactly. you wouldn't no. and where I sometimes think that that's what I'd be I'm not whenever I'm mm. in those circumstances yeah, exactly. so that was one thing that's why that kind of hearing that was really quite something because you might say that, and if we weren't actually doing this podcast, you wouldn't have said that, and having heard that is quite nice okay. for me. It's lovely. Um, and in the same way, I was reminded, going now back to this idea of your vulnerability on this uh, trek and you being away and me, my sense of you, I really was, because I couldn't do anything, I couldn't do anything to help you because I literally couldn't talk to you, I couldn't, I couldn't you know, minimally. <clears throat> um, I was reminded of how actually helpless I feel like that when I'm with you. I feel often as unable to, or disallowed, and that's not because you're being difficult or that you're, you're not appreciative or any of those things, it's that you will not court vulnerability in yourself. You, you, you find it intolerable I love to in pay, yourself. I love to pay you a film that I did this morning for my Trek team, because my Trek team, we have a WhatsApp group and we're still WhatsApp -ing, WhatsApping each other a lot because we're all up through the half the night and because we've made big connections. And, and anyway, so I did this film for them today and I was just saying, oh, thank you, you know, you were a great team and blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know, as the days go on and we think about what was the purpose beyond raising awareness and raising money for the charity, because let's face it, anyone that does a, a, a challenge for a charity Yes, that's how it starts out that you're doing for the charity, but it ends up also what's going on for you and oh, why you're doing it and what absolutely. happens. And it's not altruistic. It starts off altruistic and then it ends up as a, something else. Excuse me. Um, and I was saying, you know, as the as the days go through, through, and I'm sort of trying to think back and look over it, and what did I do, and what was the meaning for of it for me, and what did I learn, and what did, and I actually said that I was choice was taken away from me. And I had to lean on other people. Mm. And I found it so hard until I was broken and I couldn't get up that mountain without that help. Mm. But that's a huge and metaphor I think, for and your I, life. Yeah, yeah, that's, well, that's what I said in this film. And I think, you know, I know the reasons for this. You know, when I was growing up, my eldest sister, Dina, was so shy and she was so you know, came from this very big, loud, bombastic, 
crazy family where every weekend there was big parties a nightmare for a shy child absolutely mm. not absolute mm. nightmare and I would walk with her behind me holding her hand saying that's okay come with me come with me and I was, I was reminded of that on the mountain it was mm. really strange on mm. the mountains um and I was always better and I was more able climbing the mountains when there was somebody in front of me or behind me that needed me and I could get up there easier but when it was beyond my physical capabilities, then I needed that. I needed someone in front of mm. me and someone behind me to get me up. And it was really difficult to take it, but it was good for me because there was just no choice. Well, so can, I had to. So can I ask why it takes you having to go up the Himalayas in order to be able to accept the hand of help? I mean, why can you, I mean, why would you even ask me that question? Well, no, because, insofar because, as, as your partner... No, I'll, I'll no, 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 but let me, let me, just, let me just say why. Why would you even ask that question? Because not it's not the whole of the purpose of being on the planet as a human being, trying to find these things yeah, out yeah, about no, ourselves absolutely. in all kinds of different ways. No. I mean, it could be something totally ridiculous. There I'm could not, be some sort of accident. I don't know. I wouldn't be able to answer no, that. Because, I'm not being literal in that. It's like, why did I have to go to the Arctic to have the rock bottom and the fucking crazy nervous breakdown? It's the same thing. It happened and it was that and it know. took that. No, but what I'm saying is, is that even in the few days that you've been back and you've been struggling to kind of be, you know, in present and awake and, and just struggling through the physicality of what you've been through and the emotionality of what you've been through. Um, there's been opportunities for me to just sort of cosset you and look after you and be around in, in a way that you will never allow under normal circumstances. You really do not allow it. I mean, it's, and I was reminded whilst you were away, I was thinking, oh, well, this helplessness that I feel around being able to help her and stuff, of course, it's not as acute or as obvious. But when there are issues in your family, when there are issues emotionally, when there's, you know, you, you put up the barriers. There are barriers there. And I was just reminded whilst you were away, what I missed, going back to what did I miss? I missed, I was reminded of something I miss even when I'm with you, which is the ability to care for you. And now I know as much of that is about me being hesitant in wanting to do that, but part of that hesitancy is born of how you hold back. You push away and, you know, it's going to be another podcast. There was a piece yesterday about are you an avoidant? Are you an anxious beloved? All this kind of stuff. And I just was reminded, I was thinking, God, isn't it funny? This is obviously, she's having her metaphorical mountain challenge where she's having to reach out for help. This is also working metaphorically for me because this is like a metaphor for how she, she, she doesn't want any help through the Ben Nevis, ben Nevis before lunchtime of her heart, which she can go through on a day up here but due to work, due to the kids, due to family. It's funny because when we had to climb Ben Nevis twice before lunch and we got to points where I was just, I had to go into like, I'm in labour. I was completely in labour mm. when I was giving birth to that effing mountain. And I thought of you a lot. Mm. Mm. What do you mean in terms of what, how, how we'd gone through things like mm. labour together? Mm. Anyway, I've got jet lag. <laughs> Tired. Oh. <laughs> You're right, sweetie. Yeah. All I'm saying is, it made me realise how much I want to look after you and how much I want you to let me, not always, but sometimes, look, let me look after you. Will right. you make me a cup of tea then? Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm going to take full advantage of this. Okay, guys. And a cheese toast tea. <laughs> and the great thing is, is that when she asks for a cup of tea, she's not dictating how to make it. Oh, sweetie. All right. Should we wrap up? Yeah. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. I think it might have done Sometimes. here. Sometimes. All right. <laughs> oh, there's me getting all gloopy and you just, just have to push me back again. <laughs> all right. <laughs>